Hello, this is Dr. Neil Baum, and I would like to spend five minutes talking to you about the process of terminating the doctor-patient relationship. In the past, I have tried to provide you with suggestions that you would use, if not daily, but at least regularly. This particular video is a process or a concept or something that you may need only rarely in your practice, and that is how to terminate a patient and to discontinue the doctor-patient relationship. It is true that far and away, the majority of physicians, including urologists, have to terminate a patient at least once during their career. It's been my experience that most of my colleagues and myself included only have to terminate a very small number of patients. I would like to give you a story from my practice on how not to terminate a patient. <clears throat> a a 30-year-old uh, young man came to see me and was requesting treatment for erectile dysfunction. His past medical history revealed that he was using antiviral medications and that he was HIV positive. I asked him if he was monogamous and he said, no, he wasn't. I asked him if he revealed to any potential new partners that he was HIV positive. He said, no. So my comment was, I was uncomfortable providing him with medication if he didn't disclose his HIV status. And then I said, I suggest you find another physician. He stormed out of the office and his final comment to me was, I'll see you in court. Obviously, I have learned a lot since that time of terminating a patient and that is certainly not the way that is the proper method of terminating a doctor-patient relationship. In the next few minutes, I will discuss with you the protocol for terminating the doctor-patient relationship. Remember that our relationship with our patients is an at-will relationship, which means the doctor or the patient can terminate at any time that they wish. There are five common reasons for termination. I point out to you the last one, that is failure to pay their bills, is the least common. I've had several patients that owe in excess of $1,000 and they pay $5 a month. They will never completely uh, wipe out their bill, but at least they are showing a level of responsibility and I accept that. The AMA has guidelines and an opinion on the process of termination. And the main objective or the, our main focus is that we have to avoid abandoning a patient who we have initiated a doctor-patient relationship. And we must give them notice to permit another physician, another urologist, to be obtained to provide them with urologic care. The appropriate protocol re, uh, emphasizes the importance of documenting what you have done and make sure that you submit this to the patient as a certified letter. And this is something I didn't recognize until recently that you should use restricted delivery that means it's restricted to the person that you are sending the letter. So now you have evidence that you sent the letter, it was received, and it was received by the person that you are wishing to terminate that relationship. Uh, I think it's a good idea to give an explanation, but it is not necessary. You have to agree to forward a copy of their records to any new physician that they are able to contact. And you should allow at least 15 to 30 days for them to find another physician. 
obviously for patients who are in rural communities and may have greater difficulty finding a urologist as so many counties in America are without a urologist, you may have to give them a little longer period of time. Indicate in the letter that you are available only for emergency purposes. Be sure to put a copy of this record, of this letter in their medical record. Also, very important to inform your colleagues and those who you cover with that they, that patient is no longer going to be under your care unless it's an emergency. So if you find yourself on a weekend when you're not on call and they call a colleague, you want to be sure that they do not start instituting care with that patient. I think it's also important, and sometimes you have a contract to inform the patient's provider that you are terminating the relationship. Then there comes the question of uh, notifying the referring physician. I think it is at least necessary to phone that referring physician. And on one or two occasions, I clearly remember the referring physician stating that that patient, it really is difficult and they wish or plan to do the same thing that I did, and that is terminate the relationship. I'd like to conclude with a final story about a urologist in a rural community who recommended a radical prostatectomy for a patient with localized prostate cancer. The patient sought out another urologist located about 100 miles away. After his radical prostatectomy, the patient returned to his hometown with a problem with his Foley catheter. The patient called the first urologist and asked the first urologist to take care of him and to solve the problem with the Foley catheter. So let me ask you a question. What would you do? You have two options. You either bite the bullet and take care of the catheter problem or you send the patient back to the operating surgeon 100 miles away. Now, if you chose option B, you are at risk of litigation under the category of abandonment. Why? Because you didn't formally terminate the doctor-patient relationship and you still have an obligation even though they had the surgery by another doctor, you are obligated to still provide care unless you formally uh, terminated that relationship. So what's my take home message? My take home message is that if you follow this advice and this protocol, you should be protected against any legal action. Don't forget to keep the patient's interest in mind and definitely apply the golden rule. Try to treat the patient with an element of sensitivity. Remember, we're professionals and we have to sometimes look the other way and accept things that not necessarily uh, seem logical and appropriate, but remember the golden rule in these set of circumstances. So if you would like a copy of my article on terminating the patient or like a copy of my termination letter, kindly contact me at this uh, email address. I look forward to hearing from you and speaking with you again in another video. Thank you.